Download free photos, music, and more at TonyClarets.com. You can use them for personal or commercial use. Hydroslide. The next big boost in kneeboarding came from the man most recognized for popularizing the sport. Danny Churchill, quarter mile speed ski record holder in 1974, bought Glideslide in the wake of the gas crunch. He was a former employee of Glideslide who knew the business. Churchill redesigned the Glideslide to make it more stable. Then he switched from blow molding to roto molding and renamed the product Hydroslide in 1976. Churchill worked tirelessly to increase the visibility of his new kneeboard. He established a national sales network, hit the trade shows, and produced a film for dealers so that potential customers could see how easy and fun kneeboarding could be. Churchill pushed hard with the trade magazines, and during the next five years, sales of the Hydroslide increased dramatically. By the late 1970s, Hydroslide had reached and maintained a growth rate of 50% per year, and kneeboarding was firmly established. The 1977 launch of Spray Magazine changed the face of the water ski industry and was instrumental in helping kneeboarding find a bigger audience. Water skiing already had a publication called The Water Skier, which was put out by the American Water Ski Association, AWSA, but The Water Skier covered mostly three-event tournament skiing and was old-fashioned compared to the bold photos and feature stories that appeared on the pages of Spray. Spray had articles and advertisements that covered the complete variety of water sports, not just tournament skiing. Wayne Grimditch was featured doing flips off the ramp on his cut-down freestyle jumpers. Readers saw colorful pictures of Lee Kirk, a Long Beach local, who used asbestos booties to set a new barefoot speed record. Many top show skiers were represented, like Skip Gilkerson in one of my all-time favorite shots. Skip rode a pair of shoe skis while waving and smiling like it was a million dollar move. But it was his green Elvis style jumpsuit with sequins that took the cake. What a showman. Spray Magazine showed kneeboarding too, and Danny Churchill took full advantage of advertisements and promotions. He hired the world champ Sammy Duvall to appear in full page color ads riding a hydroslide. Sammy was a phenomenal skier and dynamic personality who made kneeboarding look fun. The colorful ads ran month after month for years, and Sammy became kneeboarding's first star. When it came to promoting Hydroslide, no stone was left unturned. Some of the first how-to articles for kneeboarding were paid advertisements by Hydroslide. Churchill kept it rolling with the Hydroslide photo contest. Readers from all around the country sent their best shots to compete for a free Mastercraft for a year. A full-page ad ran each month featuring eight new pictures of kneeboarders jumping, spinning, and crashing on flip attempts. Other contestants wore wacky costumes, rode with a dog, or snapped cute pictures of their kids. The photos flooded in, over 12,000 in a single year at the peak of the four-year promotion. In 1979, another magazine, World Water Skiing, entered the market, and there was more coverage than ever for the wide world of skiing. Hydroslide advertised there, too, and the following year, World Water Skiing ran the first U.S. cover to feature kneeboarding. The rider was Brett Wing, world champion barefooter and all-around great skier. Spray countered with the kneeboarding cover of their own, this time with Camille Duvall. I watched it all unfold while working at Mike's Ski Shop on the Colorado River. The bold pictures and stories made me dream of someday being a famous skier, too. I was already doing kneeboard moves that were better than anything I saw in the magazines. I was a teenager stuck in the backwoods while all the exciting action was happening in Florida. It reminded me of Luke Skywalker in Star Wars, stuck working for his uncle on Tatooine. The industry was growing by leaps and bounds, and Churchill had the magic touch. Hydroslide was a juggernaut. On the heels of his success, Churchill sold Hydroslide in 1981 to the giant merchandiser Kransko, the makers of hula hoops and frisbees. Churchill maintained a key role at Hydroslide, and the new infusion of big bucks brought kneeboarding to even greater heights. A new design, the Hydroslide Pro, was introduced, and went on to become the all-time best-selling kneeboard. Hydroslide was unquestionably the hottest thing on water. In a battle to sell even more kneeboards, the mail-order companies like Bart and Overton's started running full-page ads with the must-have water toy of the early 1980s. Everyone was talking about Hydroslide. Hydroslide.